November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point My Ground School. Earlier this week, my airport's AWOS reported a density altitude of minus 900 feet in the morning and then 2,700 feet in the afternoon. That got me thinking how vastly different an airplane would behave on takeoff. So this video is about calculating your takeoff performance. You're sure to see this on all your tests. Now, why do you need to calculate takeoff performance? Well, mainly because you need to make sure you have enough runway to take off. Secondly, you have to make sure that you'll be able to clear any obstacles that are off the runway. You will always see takeoff performance quoted in two ways, one with the ground roll and one over a 50 foot obstacle, like a decently sized tree, pole, or hill. Also, once you calculate the ground roll, you'll be able to establish your abort points. Like, if we're not off the ground by the 1500 foot marks, I'll pull power and we'll abort the takeoff. Established abort points will inform you of your airplane's health before you leave the ground. Maybe your engine isn't performing well. Maybe your brakes are stuck or whatever. If you know what your takeoff distance should be, then you'll know when something might be wrong if you're using more runway than you expect. Now, I'm certainly guilty of not calculating my takeoff performance distance every time from my home airport, and I bet you are too. The runway is plenty long, and I've determined that the windsock is my universal abort point, um, but I really should do the math every time I fly, and I hope you learn from my mistake, but I'm going to vow to do better. I always do the calculations for other airports that I intend to visit, but luckily a 172 or Piper or other small plane can pretty much get in and out of any airport. But you need to know how to calculate your takeoff performance for your tests and in real life. So we're going to go through some examples and I'll show you how easy it really just is. So for instance, if you're in a Cessna 172, you're at 2,000 pounds weight, you have a 10 knot headwind, you're at 2,500 feet elevation, what is your ground run and takeoff over a 50 foot obstacle? This one's pretty easy. So you can see here, we're at 2,000 pounds. Then we're going to move over. Uh, here's the headwind column. There's three for 0, 10, and 20. We're in the 10. We're going to go over to here. This box is for 2,500 feet elevation. So our ground run is 530 feet. And our total distance to clear a 50 foot obstacle is only 1,000 feet. This thing's going to get off the ground real quick. So example two, here we're at 1,850 pounds. There's no wind. Our field elevation is uh, 3750. And so what's our ground run and takeoff over a 50 percent or 50 foot obstacle? Well, so for this example, 1850 doesn't exist, right? We have to interpolate. 1850 does happen to be exactly halfway between 2000 and 1700. So we're right here. Um, we're going to come over to the wind column. We see that we have no wind. So we're going to look at this one and this one. We're going to come across until we see our field elevation of 3750. Well, we've got data for 2500 and 5000. We don't have 3750. In this case, uh, 3750 is exactly in the middle. So we're on this line here. So we have to interpolate. We're going to pay attention to the 755, 520, 905, and 625, right? Because we are we're right here. We're on, we're on this, this dot. Halfway between 1,700 and 2,000. Halfway between 2,500 and 5,000. So we just need to average these four numbers to get our ground run. In which case, it ends up being uh, 701 foot 3 inches. And the total distance over a 50 foot obstacle then is the average of this 1325, 920, 1095, and 1625. And so our ground run, uh, or excuse me, the 50 foot obstacle distance then is 1,241 foot, three inches. Okay, so see, it's not that bad. You've got the data points. You just need to calculate the averages, but only in this case, when it's right in the center, can you do a straight average. Now, your test answers won't be that precise. So you'll pick the closest number. And you needn't yet worry if you're not off the ground by 701 foot six inches. Give yourself a couple extra feet, perhaps. Now, sometimes the examples will be more toward one side than the other and not right in the middle, like the example I just gave. 
but you'll simply weight your numbers and lean that way. For instance, if in our this example, we're at 1950 pounds and it's 13 degrees hotter than standard at 2500 feet elevation. Okay, well, you can see 1950 is going to be a lot closer to 2000 than 1700. Well, but how much closer? Well, we can, let me just show you here. We'll just make a quick number line. I'll show you how to do a quick weighted average. So your 1700s here and say your 2000 is here, right? So you're at 1800 there, you're at 1900 there. Um, but we're at 1950, right? So we're here. So this is one six. How many? How many? How many segments are there here? There's one, two, three, four, five. There are six segments. So this is one sixth. That's green's not working. This is one sixth of the whole deal. This is five sixths, right? So it's five times closer to 2000 than it is 1700. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a weighted average. Okay. 2000 pounds at our top here. Uh, we're going to subtract 1700, right? So that gives us a delta of th we're 300 pounds. Now, um, we have to do a little bit of division here. 250, right? Cause we're 250 up from this lower limit, 250 over 300 is five sixths. All right. So we know how much we're going to need to weight the 2000. We have to weight it five sixths of it. So what we're going to do here, let, let me just show you how this works though, real quick. All right. So if we take five sixths times 2000 plus one sixth times 1700, that is exactly 1950. Okay, so the weighted average, so these numbers, they work. So we're going to weight this one five times more. So in our case here, since we're, we're closer to 2000, you know, we're, we're right up in here. So we have to pick our numbers carefully. And it says in our example that we are at 2,500 feet elevation. So we're going to be using this box here. We're not averaging any boxes this way this time. We're simply going to average numbers within the boxes, but we're going to weight them. Okay, so we're looking here at the 755 and we're looking at the <clears throat> 520, right? Because we're here and here. So then these are going to be the numbers we're going to wait for our ground run. And for our 50 uh, foot obstacle, we're going to wait 1325 and 920. So how do we do this? Well, just kind of like I showed you here, we have to give the top number, the one that's closer to 2000, more weight. So we'll go five sixths times 755 plus one sixth times 520, right? And that gives us 716 feet for a ground run. However, we've got to read the footnotes. It says that it's 13 degrees hotter than standard. All right. Well, down here in the notes, it says that you're going to increase the distance 10% for each 25 degrees Fahrenheit above standard. Well, we're 13 degrees, which is basically half of 25. So we're going to only add half of this number. Instead of 10%, we're going to add 5, right? So it's 716 times 1.05 for a total ground run of 752 feet. Now, we'll do the same thing for the 50-foot obstacle. Let me drop these numbers out here. And we'll, we'll replace them with 1325. And then we'll replace this one with 920, right? Remember, because we have to, we weight the 2000 five times more than we weight this one because it's closer to that. Uh, that'll still be 5%. And so here we are at uh, 1,258 feet. And then 5% more of that is 1,321 feet for our two numbers. Did you guys come up with that? Always read the footnotes. They'll explain what to do if things aren't standard. And the one thing to note here on the chart is the absence of the tailwind component. Some manuals have that, but this one doesn't. So I wouldn't know how to factor in a tailwind, which might happen if it's a one way in and one way out type of airport. I saw one once that said something like add 10 knots for each or add 10% uh, for each five knots of tailwind. 
but check your manual. I hope this is making some sense. It's really not that hard, just some simple math, which you now know how to do for any point interpolated and with weighted averages. Let's do another one with a different set of charts. This type of chart is going to show up on a test too, but there's no math involved. It's all done graphically. This one from chapter six of the airplane flying handbook has your density altitude on the left, which I get from my local AWOS. Density altitude, remember, is what the airplane feels. It behaves as if it's actually at that altitude. So I mentioned earlier that my density altitude in the afternoon was 2,700 feet. So I'd start here on the left and go over until I intersect my weight. Then I'd go down to get my ground roll here and my total distance over a 50 foot obstacle over here. In the FAA sport, recreational and private pilot test supplements, you'll see charts like 236 for a gyroplane and 237 for an airplane. Now 237 for an airplane looks tricky, but it does all the math for you. There's even an example scenario worked out here in red. I'm going to walk you through the example in red. The scenario here says that it's 15 degrees Celsius outside, which is a standard day or 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So we start at the bottom here at 15, halfway between 10 and 20. We come up on our vertically until we hit our pressure altitude, which the scenario says it's 5,650 feet, which of course is just short of the 6,000 line. Then they have us coming out here to the right to this reference line to get over into the weight. Well, our maximum gross weight here is in fact what we're currently loaded at. Cause you've seen here, we're 26, 28. That means this one would be 3000 there, but we have to stop here at our reference line. So we are at maximum gross weight. So we will come straight across, but let's say if we were at 2,400 pounds down here, we would enter here at the reference line. And then we would simply fly parallel between these black lines down until we hit 2,400 here and then we would come out to the next reference line. But it has us coming out up here since our weight is there. So we're coming out up here. Let me erase this one to avoid confusion. And now this is our wind reference line. Okay. Our scenario says that we have a nine knot headwind. So we're going to fly down parallel along until we hit the nine, which is right there. And then we'll pop out over to here to the reference line for obstacle heights. This one here, of course, is zero, right? Um, if we just lift off the ground, we have uh, gone over an obstacle that's zero feet. And so this zero foot obstacle represents our ground run. And we'll come straight across out to get that number here, which is, um, if you look at this scale here, it looks to be about 1400 feet for a ground run. Uh, you can see here the answer has it at 1375. So that's pretty close. You'll most likely on a test see something like 1400 instead of an exact 1375. To get our height over the 50 foot obstacle, we will fly parallel to these black lines where we came in. And that takes us along these red arrows here in our example and pops us out right there, which looks to be about, oh, 2250 maybe. And the answer is at uh, 2300. So that's good. So there's our answer for our ground roll and our clearance over a 50 foot obstacle. You can see it did all the math for me. I didn't have to do any math. It's all graphical. I'll make one up really quick and we'll do it again before I have you do one on your own. So for example, you're at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's say you're at a pressure altitude of 7,000 feet. That's a really big comma, 7,000 feet. Weight equals 2,500 pounds. And you have a five knot tailwind. Okay, there's your scenario. Pause now if you want to try this one out on your own before I show you how to do it. Okay, here we go. So we have to use this bottom chart down here since we were given it in Fahrenheit. So we'll come up the 80 line until we intersect 7,000 pressure altitude. Well, we don't have a line for 7,000, so we need to interpolate between the 6,000 and the 8,000 line, which appears to be about there. Okay. Now we'll come out over to our reference line. Okay. Our weight given in this scenario is 2,500 pounds, which is this line right there. Okay. 
So we're going to come in here and we're going to fly down kind of parallel to these lines. They're going to get closer together. That's okay. Bang. When we hit our white line, we're going to stop. Then we're going to pop out horizontally to our next reference line. This one's for the wind. I said you had a five knot tailwind. Okay. We well, can see the tailwinds are these dashed lines that go up and the headwinds are the solid lines that kind of go down. We are going to go up. This tailwind is in 10 knot increments. So our five knot is going to be about there. All right. So we're going to fly up this black line until we hit our tailwind line. So we went up just a little bit and we're going to pop out this way. Now we have an obstacle height. An obstacle height of zero, remember, corresponds to we just lifted off. So we're going to come straight out there. And it appears that our ground roll was about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 1600 feet for a ground roll. And then to get our 50 foot obstacle clearance height, we're going to fly up parallel to this other black line and pop out up here, which appears to be about uh, 2,600 feet. So there's your two answers, once again, without doing any math. So you're flying home after a ski trip. It's minus 10 degrees Celsius. You're at an 8,300 foot elevation, 2,900 pounds, so you're nearly full, and you have a bitter 15 knot headwind. The question is, how much runway are you going to use, and what speed are you going to lift off at? Well, let's enter our chart here at the left and work our way to the right. Outside air temperature is minus 10. So we're over here along this line, aren't we? Okay. Our pressure altitude was 8,300. So we're just a smidge above this 8,000 line, about right there. So we're going to come across to our reference line there. Our weight, I said, was 2,900 pounds. That puts us... 28, 26, these are in 100 pound increments. So it's this line right there, this dark blue line. So we're gonna come in until we hit that. We didn't really move much at all there. So we went down just a tad as we flew along these parallel black lines. Didn't go down much at all. So we're gonna come out over here to our wind component. Okay, so you've got a 15 knot headwind. 15 knots is right there, halfway between 10 and 20. So we're going to fly down because the headwinds are these solid lines that go down because it says headwind here on this tag. We're going to fly down parallel to these black lines until we hit our 15 knot headwind. We're going to fly out, which puts us just below these red example arrows. Okay. And our ground roll then for an obstacle height of zero puts us at about, looks like 1300 foot ground roll. And our obstacle height for 15, 50 feet looks to be about 2,200 feet. Did you guys come up with the same answers? Well, now you know how to do takeoff performance calculations. You'll need this on your tests and in real life uh, when you're considering flying into that small strip to go hiking in the foothills of Mount Tibidabo. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That'll certainly help me out as well leaving comments down below and engaging in lively discussions. And stay with me on 121 Point Mike.